Hello, everyone. Ah, oh, I see you're here. Um, so, uh, welcome to a, a, a panel with a bit of a story attached to it. If any of you have gone to the SCED, you will see that there is a desperate message from me in all caps saying, we're changing the name of this, because I think everybody I talked to on this panel that I had a chance to talk to went, social, meet the social, inf what the, that's a terrible title. And I want to explain very briefly how that happened, which is that at the Falcoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web, there's one person that does work, and that's Megan Gavis. And one of the things that she, she does is she said, like, you should talk on this. Wouldn't this be a good idea for a panel? And, and we all go, yeah, that would be a great idea for a panel. I'll get right on that, Megan. And then Megan waits like a week, and then she submits it for us. Um, and Megan put that title on it, and I hadn't seen it, um, and uh, uh, we were talking about, oh, we should change it, because it's a little, makes it sound kind of naff. Um, but sadly, Megan, who's brilliant, couldn't be here today because she was the person who showed positive on a COVID test on the first day, and she hadn't met any of you, but she had to fly back. So what I'd like to do, apart from making her laugh with that scared message, is I'd just like to record you all saying hi to Megan. So, um, if that's okay, not you. Well, well you, uh, no, no, you, you. We'll do it with you, and then we'll do it with you later. So, after three, one, two, three. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. That's the that's the administrivia dealt with. Now, the real reason behind it, this being about social media influences is actually the influences that this amazingly illustrious panel have made on existing social media, um, the lessons they've learned from those uh, experiments in existing social media, and their plans and the work that they're very concretely doing right now to build a better, decentralized social media world. So I'm going to ask everybody to sort of introduce themselves, and then I'm going to explain how modest they're being um, and uh, tell them what they really did. So we'll start with you. Hi, my name is Keegan, and I'm a staff software engineer at Element, um, and I primarily work on the Matrix protocol. Um, I have been focusing recently on where that protocol is going in the future, so specifically things like account portability, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, low bandwidth APIs, and things like that. I'm Christine Lemmer weber uh, I'm probably most well-known for my we're co-authoring and co-editing the ActivityPub specification, which is used by Mastodon, Chrome, a bunch of other things. Um, but uh, nowadays, I'm CTO of the Sprightly Institute. You might hear of somebody else who also is uh, a, a member of that organization. Um, and uh, um, the the you know actually not not far away from that, many of the things in Sprightly came from. Um, exploring what you know comes next after the uh, the work that happened in ActivityPub, uh, you know, making things more peer to peer, making so that we have uh, um, kind of richer interactions and authority models, um, and uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, so um, yeah, so I'll take this one. Oh, uh, I'm Brian Newbold. Uh, I work at uh, Blue Sky. I'm a protocol engineer there. I've been there since about January. So some of the protocol things were done well before, but we've been doing a lot. I work uh, mostly on content moderation uh, tooling and uh, formalizing our standard, or the specification of the protocol. Um, before that, I worked at the Internet Archive for about five years, so I've been to a bunch of these camps and actually met my coworkers at Blue Sky uh, at a previous iteration of this camp. Hi, I'm Randy Farmer. I've been doing online communities since the 1970s. I built my first message board, my first chat system, and my first multiplayer game in the late 1970s in high school. Uh, tomorrow, if you see me, I'll be carrying around a printout that uh, shows some of the first uh, arguments between moderators, myself and my co-moderator. Um, <laughs> You won't see the posting where I'm compared to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, <laughs> but I can tell you that the challenges associated with online media have been with us all since. And I've been doing online community development and technologies related to it for my entire career. Um, if there's no G in online community, it's probably me. Um, <clears throat> I'm Ravel. Uh, I've been building social media online things, but since I was a teenager, but that was in the 1990s. Um, and uh, I 
set a media activist network called Indie Media around the world back in the 1990s and then helped start this thing called Twitter and helped start podcasting and current, uh, was very involved in Secure Scuttlebutt uh, and built an app called Planetary and then most recently built an app called No Social on the Noster Protocol. And so, yeah, so been doing this stuff for a while. So, I, I, as you can see, and actually that was a really great description of these things, everybody here has been involved at a very deep level working on protocols, but also a pretty much, if not on the um, second or third generation now, probably, you know, the fourth generation, right? They've, we've, we've iterated through... How many, how many fingers do you, nine? Is that just because you've run out of fingers? Or is that like, okay, you've got one left there. So, so I guess, I, I don't want to blame you guys, but why does it still suck? <laughs> I, 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 maybe we can go around and like, I don't, again, like what, what, is the, what is the challenge that I think you've all seen in building these things from the point of view of the protocol, that people who come in one generation in and go, you know, I know how to solve this, right? What is the thing that you learn from doing this multiple times that is a little hard to see from the outside? Um. So if you approach from the bottom up, so you just kind of go for, let's go full peer to peer and everything will sort itself out, you soon realize that you do need some sort of centralized service to do things like resetting your password or things like that. If you go from the other end and you go from the centralized approach, then you realize, oh, that's bad because now one authority has all this power, so you want to kind of decentralize it a bit more. But then, you know, you, there is this middle ground and there's these trade-offs that you need to make and protocols make different trade-offs depending on what they're trying to do. And then once you throw in things like end-to-end -end encryption into the mix, which makes things very, very difficult for uh, servers because they don't know what's being said, um, and then add in all the politics and association in terms of uh, content moderation and things like that, it becomes, it becomes very hard. So partly because no matter which way you approach it, there's challenges, and partly because um, the sheer scope of the things that you're trying to do just expands and expands and expands um, through time. Uh, I'll just be pretty blase. Uh, it's all pretty good. We solved it. Um, no. Um, uh, I actually think, in some ways, some of this stuff is easier than, 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 than people think, in that if you go down to the conceptual level, it's possible to build these things in terms of peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, fully distributed systems, um, but it often means thinking about things outside of the current structural paradigm. Um, when, uh, and I think, uh, one, one, one thing that ends up happening through is that um, sometimes something takes off and everybody mimetically believes this is really structurally the right thing to do. So um, I'd like Randy to expand on this in a, uh, in a moment, but um, a lot of the technology that, uh, that ActivityPub did, right, you know, with the, it was just the actor model, right? It's just a very simple, very simple protocol. And I think that's one of the reasons that uh, ActivityPub has been successful is that the conceptual foundation of it is very simple. Now, there are certain problems when, uh, when you end up running in, uh, uh, about robustness with the way that it was particularly uh, rolled out. But one of the really interesting things to me, one of the reasons that I started working with Randy on Sprightly and started doing uh, the research before that, uh, um, tapping into that work, is I, you know, there was a lot of work that where a lot of these problems were solved much better, not all of them but a lot of things dramatically better than we, we might think in like the 90s and et cetera. Part of the thing is the centralized model is much easier to roll out and make successful and it takes a while to understand what the consequences of these problems are. And it's very difficult once you've been exposed to a particular mode of thought to rearrange your mind to something different even for very experienced people. It used to be impossible for me to explain to people what ActivityPub was. Now it's trivially easy. And the difference is, are two things. One, people now know why they need it, right? Not just ActivityPub, but I mean decentralized systems in general, right? The stuff we're all doing, right? 
And two, they've now seen it enough, right? So sometimes when we give talks, it sounds like science fiction about we're saying well, you could do things this way, and it's partly because you're not using it yet. Once you start using these things, you can understand it. But I, I would like to prime Randy to say, why is it and <laughs> that... You could do it. <laughs> no, Randy, you have to No, you have to answer this. Okay. required as a co-founder. Uh, um, why is it that if Electric Communities, the company you co-founded in the 1990s, managed to figure out all this stuff, why is it that then it just seemed to disappear? And I, I want to know, because you've also been doing this for 20, 20, 30. I mean, you didn't just do the communities and then stop, yeah. right? You Continuous. went and w and into a lot of these companies that then went on to make the same yeah, mistake. You can, you can blame me for news feeds and a bunch of other things. Uh, right, too. but like, but presumably you were like in there going, no, not like that! Um, so how, uh, what, what was the challenge there too? So sorry, double barreled run round. All right, but then all right. We'll move. Uh, so let me see if I can get those frames together. So first, I do want to make a generic comment uh, to channel a, f a, a previous co-founder and co-creator of uh, many of the important things that we use today, including JSON protocol, uh, promises and futures, the e-programming language, and much other things. Chip Morningstar, he's written a famous post that's so worth reading. It's called, You, you Can't Tell People Anything. <laughs> and a big part of the problem, and, and it literally answers Christine's question, saying, why couldn't we get traction with that stuff 25 years ago? Good news is it's going open source this year, so you'll get to see it for yourself. But we couldn't get traction 25 years ago because we couldn't tell them how it worked. We knew how it worked. We knew why it was going to be awesome. But until people are using it, they don't know what's great about it. They also don't know what sucks about it, which is the other part of the question. Um, you know, the first question, which is, we didn't know what would happen when you allowed any person on the planet to post something that could be re then retweeted to every other person on the planet? We didn't know what that was. It wasn't possible until they fixed the fail well, and then they fixed that, and they pushed their way on some technical boundaries that made things possible, which it turns out we don't really need or want. Um, but we like it. We got an endorphin response to TikTok, and we get that for Twitter and a bunch of other things, um, and so that it's profitable. Uh, if you don't, if you've never heard the phrase in shitification before, look it up. Um, it's about, and they, those were built on a model which is, we will eventually make money. We'll put these levers in that we can use to extract value from this after we get them doing something that they think they have to keep doing, uh, and then we'll turn that on and we'll grin and bear it, and uh, when they complain, and then we'll just take value out of it. Uh, and, and our beloved Reddit has suffered from it as well recently. Um, the weird thing is Reddit had done a bunch of the things right. It's just you couldn't make money at it. And it's when you put money in front of all of it and the explanations have to make the money, you have to drive the money, the money driven, you have to explain what it is to get the money to make it. And when you have to show it, it starts to get eyeballs and then convert some money. It's that whole cycle has produced software we don't want, and that is bad for us. Um, and it's because they're not building community. When someone says Twitter community, they're using two words together they should never use together. <laughs> um, communities have stuff in common. And when we were designing this stuff before, we were talking about communities, people interacting with each other because they want to, to try to solve problems they want to solve. Uh, it's just when you put money in front of it, it became, that was the problem we were trying to solve, which is how to make money with people's attention. Um, it was, we are now showing, the good news is, all the people in this room here are showing things working and finding out what they do. And we know now to be more cautious and that everyone being able to post everything to everyone instantaneously, we no, no, no longer believe is inherent good. Uh, that's a step forward. So, so Rabble, every time Randy says Twitter, like I looked <laughs> at you and you were like, no, 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 no. I just want first of all, I wanted to say, it's Thank chill. You. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, but also, like you talking about these multiple generations, right? You 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 were you were key in Twitter, but also arguing for a decentralized kind of solution there. And perhaps we can talk about that road not taken. Yeah. But but also went to on to take those lessons that, as as Randy said, like you don't learn this stuff until you learn it at scale, right? And you've been inside and understand what it looks like and sort of applied some of those things to developing secure scuttlebutt planetary and stuff like that. So maybe maybe just take us through that arc of your learning. Sure. So, I mean, like one of the things that I think Randy was talking about is like that on some fundamental level, the problem is capitalism. <laughs> And like we are structured and we're, we're stuck in this system. We have this economic system and it'd be like, boy, these social problems that we have in building social community software, they'd be a lot easier if we didn't have an economic system that, that exacerbates them. So like, but we can't just wish capitalism away. Like, so... We could try. Yeah, I mean, like... We, we, I mean, we have we'll, tried. We'll, it didn't we'll, work. We'll set aside a meeting for that. At this but, thing. I mean, I think that like... It's important to think about that and realize that, you know, uh, Craig Newmark got together this meeting of black Twitter. And for some reason, I was there to answer questions about where Twitter came from and mostly listen. But the, the end result of that conversation was the fundamental problem was that, you know, black Twitter had built their community on top of Twitter, which is a platform that they had no ownership of. They had no say in the control of. And so... Uh, open source stuff, it helps, but these systems need people, they need institutions, they need running them. And so it wasn't like we were unaware when we created Twitter that you should own the means of communications. Like, like, but building it is expensive, building it is hard, maintaining it is hard. And, you know, what people don't remember very often is that in 2008, we built federated Twitter over XMPP between Jaiku and Twitter, like the open federated protocol that becomes ActivityPub was built first on Twitter and then it had trouble scaling and then there was the question of how do you make money from this to pay for the servers and pay for all these people and it wasn't clear how to make money and building it on the open thing was harder and so the open network got shut down, got centralized. And then in 2012, you know, from 2006 when Twitter was started to 2012, you, anybody could go in, they could make their own app. There were all the experiences were, distant, you know, it felt like you could build your own social experience on top of this. And then Twitter was like, oh shit, we actually need to make money, which means we need to control the user experience, which means control the ads, control the data. That's when all the third party apps were shut down. That's when ActivityPub really took off because that was the first moment where people were like, oh, Twitter really isn't ours. It's really Twitter incorporated. We need to build something else. And so the Fediverse comes from that moment of enclosure. And, you know, then a decade later, Elon Musk takes over Twitter and all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, we should go use this thing. Um, <laughs> by which point the rest of us have gone off to work on newer protocols and newer things. So like we keep running into the same problems over and over again. One, one thing that came up is I was in a very odd discussion with Jack Dorsey in 2016. I think most discussions with Jack Dorsey <coughs> tend towards the odd at um, some point. Uh, when he was CEO of Twitter and he's like, should I delete Trump's account? <laughs> and, uh, or, or, the other alt-right people. And I'm like, yeah, delete the alt far-right people, all those folks. But I was like, you can't delete Trump's account because you don't own controlling shares and because Twitter is owned by the stock market and you will be removed as CEO if you delete Trump's account. The right thing to do was to delete the account, but the market wouldn't let him. And then, like... Then it got weird, which is I'm like, the problem with Twitter is that you don't have boundaries. You don't have to be able to space between, like everybody is put into the same space. And there's not just Twitter, but Instagram and all these other ones, TikTok, everyone's in this sort of universal space because that's the best way to advertise Power to people. Yeah. yeah. And then because you can't put up boundaries, you can't have doors, you can't say this is the limit of my community and that community and these are the norms for this community, that 
that's where a lot of the social conflict we get from these systems are because you can't communicate the norms. And so Twitter and, and Facebook in many ways is about bringing the entire world together and getting everyone in one space. And if you, you have to sort of ignore the inherent social conflicts that exist between people and because it's inconvenient for market size. <laughs> and then we get these horrible toxic things. But like, if we can build systems that let you have senses of space and norms in a community and different communities that have different norms, then I don't think, like, it doesn't make the problems go away, but it makes it tractable. Right. So I, I want to touch on this a little bit, but I'm bringing in Brian because, like, um, uh, Blue Sky, you're, you're the people that are doing – Everybody's taken turn do, trying to do this, and you, you're up next, I'm afraid, right? And, um, but, like, again, everybody's been in that situation of kind of having to build the thing, as, build the aircraft as it's taking off, right? And, I mean, and thanks very much, first of all, for coming, because we were all sitting there going, I imagine they might be a little busy at the moment, right? For those of you who aren't on Blue Sky, you have some invites, right, Brian? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yes. Um, uh, it's, it's, I guess, at 100,000 or so now, something like that? There's about 150,000 accounts right. registered. So, and it's, it's popping, right? And like, there's a huge amount of feedback and experimentation like there was in early Twitter with you know, AOC and, and, um, and people talking about ALF, the alien, and like, but like also kind of feeling out that community, right, as it grows. So I, I, how, do you, how do you cope with that when like there's so many people like essentially building the thing around you and then you kind of have to incorporate that into what you're doing at the protocol level? I think, I mean, a, a bit of a harder thing, which, I mean, I think everyone's experienced this uh, going back since early, at least the early 90s. But for us, like, everyone's come, this is not the, their first rodeo, right? right? Everyone's coming in with a ton of preconceptions about how things should work. Everyone's coming in with their reaction against the most recent platform that they came in from. We're mostly defined by what we're doing as very small differences from other previous platforms. We're mostly following other patterns that we've seen and hoping to you know, merge them in different ways. You asked, the leading question was like, why haven't we figured it out? And it's like, well, we've been, we've been building cities and buildings and nations for thousands of years and we haven't quite figured that out. I mean, we've had some great, you know, there's been some great parties along the way. Right. There's like some neighborhoods that are really cool. Uh, you know, so you're building, you know, the last cities may be burning down a little bit and you're like, well, what were some things that we liked about that? What should we do different this time? Everyone's gonna look back and it's gonna be like, oh, you built Brasilia, like, that sucked. <laughs> like, what were you trying to do? So trying to, you know, trying to have some ideas and mix together, you know, to me, if we can leave a pattern behind that was like a new pattern of a new city and people had good times, I'm sure people will have bad times in the city as well. Uh, but if we can come up with some novel, you know, oh yeah, leafy streets, this is really great. Or this, you know, this having a community center on every corner of every block or something that really worked yeah. out well or not, uh, that's like, that would be great. Uh, but people come in and build, they're gonna build what they're gonna build, which is, you know, it's, we, we can try to guide it a little bit, but I think it's a little conceitful to guess that we're, you know, we get to land out the, uh, roll out the boulevards in the way we'll get the city we want. So one of the interesting innovations on Blue Sky is to sort of front and center the, um, the possibility of other people's algorithms, right? So, you know, a lot of the pushback, the popular pushback, I think, against social media is the fact that their algorithms are opaque. Um, you get this feeling that you're being manipulated. It's unclear how it is. And in Blue Sky, you know, you can pick and choose from other people's, like, feed algorithms. Um, it seems like that's about trying to empower the end user to have a bit more control over their experience. Like I, I know like with Matrix and Element, like you know, you're you're essentially trying to work out how to present a a a interface that gives people that control. And in particular, kind of be able to move between servers and clients and give people that freedom. How do you how do you build something like that without overwhelming people in in the way that, you know, one of the feedback we got from the Mastodon uh, move was people going, well, okay, I'm, I can't, I, this is too much, I, I'm, I'm not used to this. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite tricky to, to figure out how to not make, expose too many decisions to the end user, 
to overcomplicate them and, and make it so they don't really understand what's going on because a lot of people don't care. A lot of people just want it to work. And if it doesn't work, they're sad. So, you know, it's so, but at the same time, you know that it would be really nice to, um, to say in Matrix, uh, a lot of people will congregate on matrix.org. It is the main home server that most people will use. And for example, they, once they've made that account, they will stick with that account. So what is decentralized then starts becoming inadvertently centralized. So one of the things that I'm looking at is, is account portability to try to you know, make it so that you can then say, okay, I like this, but now I want to move over to some other server, either one maybe I'm self-hosting or someone else that just I just want some other server, and then you can just kind of transparently migrate to another server. And the way you do that is, is really hard. Um, and at a protocol level, how you decide to do that will affect how many people will do that. So if you do it all via the client, for example, well, some people have really bad bandwidth. So if they're going to have to download gigabytes worth of data to then re-upload somewhere else, they're just not going to go and do that. So we're trying to make it so it's really seamless to do. So it is literally just a few button clicks and it kind of just works. And we think if we make the user experience really, really easy to do, um, then it will encourage people uh, and lower the barrier to entry to kind of, kind of make things simpler. Um, so I guess one of the things that, that crops up a lot is the perimeters of all of these things. So you talked about account portability. Um, one of the things I think, you know, just in endless group chats with people, that people have talked about Mastodon in particular as an implementation of ActivityPub is it sort of brings content moderation and your user account kind of in the same server. And that's one of the things I think Blue Sky is, is doing a little, a little differently. Is that something that you can you can evolve in a protocol, Christine? Is that something that you can build on top of a basic protocol? Or is it, is it, um, is it, it, do those sort of decisions require sort of a, a new start, right? It's, so when we talk about a lot of these things, um, you know, it, so there's something that's kind of really entertaining about you know uh, labeling this panel as social media influencers. Uh, uh, again, Megan apologizes. I know, I know, I know, I know, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Megan. Uh, in the following way, right? And this is a real social media influencer thing to say. The real social media influencers are all of you, right? Like and subscribe, right? Now, um, the, 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 but the. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do in the Sprightly Institute is to not define, and I mean, Blue Sky is doing this, but in a different way. We're trying to not define uh, fully how such moderation stuff completely works, um, but we're, we're trying to, what we're really trying to do is to build generalized toolkits so that communities can set up their own governance mechanisms. Right? right, and um, what we are doing are building community and governance toolkits, right? And this will, I, I mean, part of the reason that OCAPs are really interesting to me is that they are built specifically so that you can do all sorts of surprising things with them that you would never expect, right? Oh, didn't really think you could combine those two things together that way. Holy moly, right? You know, because they're, they're just very general, like programming languages are general. And, and there's something interesting about this, I think, I mean, we, we've, kind of, we've kind of started to hyper-focus because it's now and because um, we as humans always do this, right? And it's our responsibility as people sitting on a stage to, to think critically on, on a lot of the negative space, right? You know, like what's, what's gone badly? But, you know, um, it's, it's worth noting that lots of social media stuff has been great, like fantastic. And, um, and, and, and people are upset because they care about it, right? People are really upset about the Reddit stuff because they cared about subreddits that they were on, right? And people are really upset about all of these things because they cared about it, you know? Um, like, uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to call out Michaela in the audience. But Michaela has repeated to me many times, like, you keep hating on Twitter, but so many important things happen to me on Twitter. And, like, I'm upset about the stuff that's happening on Twitter because they were so important to me, right? But those things grew, right, you know? And, and one of the interesting things is we... I, I actually really believe in the building a toolkit 
to allow communities to do their things because all sorts of things become social media. The things that you would not want to be social media become social media, right? It's like it's like it's like money. Like you know, like even the most anti-capitalist people should realize you can't kill money. You know, you make a prison and you say no money here, and people are like, let's trade cigarettes, right? Like you know, like you can't stop it. You can't stop social networks. Anything will become a social network as long as people start finding that they find community there, right? The best thing we can do is provide mechanisms so that communities can help discover and create the mechanisms that matter to them. And that's one of the things that I think is really interesting about, um, you see this on Reddit all the time. Like Morgan will tell me, I don't use Reddit that much, but Morgan uses a lot of Reddit and like tells me about, or did, and would tell me about all these things that happen on these subreddits that she likes. And she's like, this is the way the, moder the moderating stuff works. Like here's the way that this community specifically uses this stuff, right? So yeah, I think you absolutely can build stuff so that um, things happen in ways that the, the protocol authors don't expect. And in fact, definitely things happen in ways that the protocol authors don't expect. <laughs> Do you mind if I hand this over to Rabble? Because Twitter was something that the protocol authors, uh, that, that the designers did not expect as like a general outcome, right? Is that correct? I mean, so, you know, we didn't, like, Twitter was originally called microblogging. The idea was that it was a blog that also had a reader that was super easy to use and uh, that it was, you know, things not important enough to tell your friends. And, like, how that converted to the public sphere by which we talk about news, politics, and culture, I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, because everybody made fun of Twitter when it was launched. Everybody thought it was the stupidest fucking thing. And why would you want to get these text messages? Like literally that was the initial reaction. And, and so like we don't even really know how it became such a big deal or now why we're all so upset about this because like it did become a big deal and we all got to participate in the public sphere in a way that we couldn't before and I think what we discovered was that uh, we really like public spaces we really like community spaces but what we had created on Twitter was something that feels like a public space but actually is a shopping mall like, it's actually private spaces where you don't have political rights, you don't have civil rights, but the, the companies created these spaces, we occupied the spaces, we made them work, we imbued them with values and community, and that was really powerful. And then I think what all of us are doing and what the D-Web project is doing on a large scale is saying that what we're creating needs to be a commons, and it needs to not be owned and regulated, owned and controlled by the state, or individual corporations. There's space for companies to do business in here. There's space for commerce to happen. It needs to have an economy, but it needs to be a commons. And so we need to design the protocol that doesn't define the behavior in it, but allows you to construct a commons and, and make those sets of rules. And you know that's one of the interesting debates that we see as people join Blue Sky, because Blue Sky is designed to be a commons. Like, and the, the, the team on Blue Sky is building the commons, building this open protocol, building these open ways in which users control the algorithms and the moderation and, and all these things like that. But a whole bunch of users just want Twitter with better mall cops. <laughs> <laughs> like they want the, the best, most clued in, politically correct mall cops <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone's debating like who's, who's mall cops they are. And so like that's the backlash you're getting is because you built a really great mall with it being the first stage towards an open community, a city. You're constructing a city and then then people are upset about it. So I you know. But I, I'm really hopeful that we're building these commons and these these alternatives, but like that's people people expected a mall cop. They expected a shopping mall. And the rest of us are like, well, that's an untenable solution. And then people need to figure it out, so. I think people actually want, like, peak boots is, like, a thing that they really want. Like, more sex work in, oh, in Blue okay. Sky. That's what they was missing from the mall. All right. Um, we'll add that to the GitHub issue list. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 
you know, you you build thing you people build things a community evolves they devo- to find their own norms what they what their own features and then you're inevitably left in the weird position of trying to design the next thing to support that modality better and you know i mean the the hope is that people will do something you didn't expect and invent their own thing and come up with solutions i think the hard thing is like how do you like steward that you can't just like leave you know you can't just be like well show up you know use tcp like figure out your own norms community like you have to provide some structure but then leave that flexible enough and then also you know you don't you can have a uh you might have a community in mind that you would like to come to you and you'd like to provide them with a particular structure but there's many structures many communities and so how do you how do you have i mean this is the biggest challenge of of Twitter, as you pointed out, right, there is no community, there is no norm. This is also a common critique of the internet archive from librarians. Libraries have a patron group that you can define. It's very hard to define a patron group for Twitter or for the internet archive or for these huge platforms. And so it's hard to, say, it's hard to be accountable. Are you, are you, you know, meeting the needs of everyone? So ostentatiously, you can try to build something that will work for multiple small communities and let people carve out their own spaces within the, the, the overall space. So I want to um, give some time for questions. So, but then if you say questions, everybody suddenly goes, oh, God, I've got to think of a question. So we're going to have questions. I'll just leave that. And now you can think of the questions. Randy, I wanted to just like get your, your take on, again, I feel terrible kind of going, you've been here 300 years. You must have, but are you, are you optimistic of the arc? I mean, right now we seem to be in this moment where a lot of these ideas are being recognized. Is that just a cycle? Is that like people go, yeah, we, we, we know what we're supposed to do, and then we try and do it, and then, like you say, capitalism or other things inter- so, interfere. So this cycle was different. Really? Yes. Okay. The, 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 the insurification has always been a problem, but never this order of magnitude. So scale changed everything. Technology scales, communities don't. If I have to summarize it as tightly as possible. And I I think most of the panel is saying the same things I agree with, but not all of them. Um, I still think security, I, I, I think the last thing you said, Ryan, was correct, that communities breaking up I, I don't know that we need to provide a large commons, but a billion little commons. Um, that context, for, I have one expression. If I wrote one last book, it would be called Context is King. Uh, and someone stole that title from me. But anyway, um, <laughs> and it's not the same book. The, the point I'm making here is uh, I'm wearing this T-shirt on purpose. This is my Dungeons and Dragons T-shirt. And the context that this is in, there's a, there's a slack for the team of people who play with me that I dungeon master. I make paper terrain. I'm telling a bunch of things about myself to point out ta- context about me you don't know. But you can look up all the rest on Wikipedia and, and do searches on my name. This you won't find because I have a pseudonym. I maintain this pseudonym. It's not a secret. You can find it if you really want to. Get on my Facebook. You'll find it. But... The point is, I have these interactions and contexts, and there are great forums that I participate in about this. There's nothing wrong with them, and they don't need significant moderation tools. They certainly don't need a global moderation standard at all. Um, but So I have my group, I have my paper crafting friends, the people who create stuff, the people who do stuff. There's this, just this tiny fraction. So I have, if you draw a diagram of me, I have thousands of these contexts, potentially some weak, some strong some in programming, some in this kind of area here. Um, they don't overlap properly. They only overlap for me. My priors are, are different than everyone else's. So there's no universal approach that doesn't focus first on how I interact with my communities. So I think the future, for example, is more about contact lists, contact lists than a shopping mall. I, sorry to hit your metaphor. I know it was <laughs> off glib. Mine is two. But, but um, you know, what does it look like when I'm interacting with my role-playing buddies, the group that's breaking up after our last session on the 30th, after 10 years of playing together, and my daughter and her husband, you know, played in my group before they were married, and all of these things, we all have these incredibly rich lives, and we've understood these things about our overlapping contexts before we had computers, but now we had computers, we invented new contexts, and when we invented new contexts, we invented new problems, mm-hmm. and so... Um, you know, as long as 
And I don't think it's always on me to do all the moderation. Um, I'm the moderation of my family. I'm the surviving patriarch. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and it, a lot of the groups I'm involved in, I'm not the leader. I'm not even part of the decision-making process. Even if they invite me to, I drop out. So, you know, I'm sorry it's very long and winded, but I think it's all about context and community. So decentralized and context communities can go together. That for, uh, you know, imagine a th conversation thread that has no host, and I mean it really. Everyone has local copies. Usenet Net News did this. Um, we know how to do this. Uh, and, and so then you don't have to worry about a government moderating it because it doesn't exist. Right. Um, and, and we've, so that's why I participate in this greater, this community of people, because we're trying to find ways to empower people to have the best lives they can have using technology to form and, you know, healthy and supportive communities for each other. Okay, so on that, tearing up a little myself. Okay, so are there any uh, questions from the audience? You had some time, I gave you time. And can you talk into the microphone so we can record it? Thanks. Uh, Randy said something about like this phenomenon of uh, giving something away for free, getting a dopamine addiction later, and shitifying it. Back when I was a teenager, I called that the first hit's always free. <laughs> so like now that we've all been through that cycle once or twice, and there's this new wave of stuff, like, are you in a mode where you're like, well, I want to try all the new hits? Or, or is there, or do you, or do you find yourself practicing like abstinence <laughs> from certain I, kinds of new things? It's so funny because halfway through this, I was like, oh, this is kind of like Social Engineers Anonymous, where like when, <laughs> when, when, when Ravel, you were sort of going, oh, this is how it felt when we had to deal this, and I could see Brian going, yeah, that's that was that's hard, man, that's hard. But um, so yeah, as users of this technology. Like, are you still like hungry for that next that next hit, or are you kind of do you all live in Go tents like this? I mean, so I I I like to use them all, and I I experiment with a lot of them. And is this drugs or social media? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible to follow up. Um, I, I'm I'm going to be the curmudgeon. Uh, I, I like using things that I've learned are going to be helpful for me. So if you recommend them to me for a purpose in my community, absolutely, I will try it. But one of the things that's all screwed up is I, I had to, this last year, uh, get a password manager to manage 300 accounts I had, yeah. which I only had five passwords for. <laughs> um, because no one had tackled this for identity yet across the web, right? That it's not been properly centered. So that there's a cost to even trying the latest thing. I don't like paying that cost, it's certainly blindly. And when I read about the cost and I read about the thing that I'm supposed to use and I found out it's pre shitification or, you know, the, I, I do have enough experience to say, oh, great, yet another replacement for Yahoo Groups, which is just as stupid as Yahoo Groups. <laughs> uh, it's got that great line of like, just as stupid as Yahoo Groups, which I invented, right? Like, <laughs> anyway, Brian, Brian uh, do you try everything? No, I'm, well, I aspire to be, you know, like, straight edge and or like I want to I want to see the whole community I want to see the impact on the individual in the community before I commit but of course I like I really love gummy bears and like eating the eating the sweet stuff so I'll, I'll check stuff out you're an 18 um, marshmallow test person yeah okay yeah or I mean I you know am I trying out the thing or am I like I mean people go there's great impromptu concerts at the mall you know like I'll go to the mall if someone's doing a pop-up thing just to cement how correct Randy is about this and also to share uh, that I also play RPGs. One of the early conversations is we were talking about RPGs and I'm, and I'm like, oh yeah, I have these two RPG systems I really like um, and I really like discovering new ones. And Randy's like, what are the ones you like? And I'm like, and I told the rules and Randy's like, that's interesting. I'm like, so are you going to try them out? And Randy's like, no. Uh, <laughs> Randy's like, I don't, I don't have time to waste on learning another system. There's no technical reason for me to do so. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so, 
<laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, so um, I like learning and fiddling with things. There's a certain amount at which when you've been doing this for long enough. I mean, Activity Pub was a, why are we doing so many versions of almost the same protocol? Right? It was a let's try to univer- uh, unify this because, oh my God, let's unify it. Let's stop making a bunch of things that are incompatible. I mean, and, and there are different structural differences between different approaches, right? You know, the uh, Matrix and Activity Pub are not the same in their design, right? And I find that interesting. And I use Matrix. Uh, um, and I think it's great uh, in the way, in the, for the particular things it does. Um, uh, uh, but the, um, mostly. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, the, the, I think that there's a lot of value in a trying a lot of things, um, but um, and I am the type of person who likes to experiment with things, um, but also doesn't have a lot of time. Um, but I think one of the things that's really is important, and I know it's part of what. Randy was getting at when saying, no, I'm not going to try your RPG systems you like. Uh, boo. Uh, the, uh, is, is um, it makes sense to have a purpose for trying a new thing, right? Um, and uh, I'm sure Dave can tell you that if there's anything you get from Randy, it is, okay, why are we doing this thing? I know that engineers are excited, but why are we going to do it? And uh, um, and uh, um, and <laughs> Dave's nodding enthusiastically. The, the um, and um, and that's good, actually. Uh, I I think that um, we should. Uh, we, I, okay. We, we so, gotta, so I've said enough. Here. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. Um, I know there's a couple. There's an answer here, and there's a couple more community questions. Can we take those after? Yeah, we'll take the Thank questions you. after. But can we just let one? Fifteen seconds. Okay, 15 seconds. Similar to Randy, um, I like small tents. I generally prefer like the pseudonym kind of approach where, yeah, on certain things, if I'm playing games, I have one identity. If I'm at work, I have another identity. If I'm talking with friends, I have another identity. And yes, managing them all is very difficult. It would be great if you could do it in one system and somehow matrix them all together in some sort of bridging mechanism. Beautifully done, beautifully done. So uh, a big thanks, for not only for this panel, but everything they've done for making the social space so much better than, uh, than it could be. Uh, and uh, many of these people will be speaking on panels elsewhere. So come and talk to them either out there or in their panels. Um, I know, Randy, you're doing one at 9.30 tomorrow, right? Yeah, okay, on pattern language, where some of this stuff will be discussed. So, thank you so much, and thank you for our moderators for keeping us slightly tight. Okay, thank you. That's it.